Hi, everybody, on a Friday, and look who I have with me. Bill Schmarzo, the CTO of Hitachi Vantera. How you doing, Bill? Hey, man, I am doing great for a Friday. So we're starting a little fun little thing here where we're going to put some videos out, see what people think of them. It's going to be a lot of fun, great fun on a Friday. And today we're going to do one, Marzo Speaks and T-Man Speaks, and we're going to bring them together. Now, I wouldn't just do this for uh, <coughs> everybody, these questions that you poise to me, right? So <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, take these with a grain of salt, but I'm sure we'll put some good dialogue to use here. So I'll try to keep a straight face on the first bullet. Okay. This is from, from Bill Schmarzo. There is no sex in the champagne room. <laughs> and what's the data science silver bullet? Oh, I can't wait. All right, well, let's talk about the first one. There's the, the, there's no sex in the champagne room comes from a, a Chris Rock uh, video that uh, I, I couldn't show to other people. But uh, it's, it's a hilarious video that gets to the point that um, there's no magic in data science. Right. There's um, there are no free lunches and there's no sex in the champagne room. Right? There's, there's that in order to be an effective data scientist, in order to really try to drive success with data science. What do we do? Well, we cheat. Right. We do all this pre work. We make sure we understand the business problem we're going after, the stakeholders who are impacted by it, the decisions they're trying to make. How are they going to measure success? What are the risks of false positives? And what are the different variables and metrics to consider? And think about all the things you do before you ever put science to the data. And so, like I say, you know, there's when you think about data science, there is no free lunch, right? There's no magic in data science, and there's no sex in the champagne room. Just seemed to make sense. <laughs> when I read that one, I had to give it a couple takes. I had to really look at that one and say, "Wow." He's making me do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's, see, man, here's here's the challenge: is that we're in an industry. When people think of most people think of data scientists, they think boring. Oh man, you know, you're dealing with data, Snore, right? Yeah, you, yeah, I, yeah. Right. So it's it, the, 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 the it's all a bunch of nerds in this space, and it's really misses the point that what we're doing is is very impactful for organizations so sometimes you got to kind of be a bit provocative you got to you got to kind of challenge people if, if, if i got a second i got to tell you a story so i was asked to to keynote at the fed um several years ago and good news is they actually invited me back so it wasn't it wasn't atrocious right so they asked me to keynote to the fed and before i walk on stage the guy grabs me and he says it's a bunch of economists out there you know, shake them up, be provocative. And I was thinking, wrong thing to say to me. So I walk up on the stage yeah. and, I, and I put my arm on the, on, the, on the podium and I lean forward and look at the, all these economists. And there's probably, you know, a couple of, several hundred of them out there. And I, I look at them and I say, doesn't it frustrate you that that CVS across the street knows more about the U.S. economy than you do? And I just stopped. Right? I paused. Yeah. And half the people in the room were like, the other half were like, yes, you're right, right? So I think part of what we need to do in our industry is we need to basically be provocative. We need to really get people out of their comfort zone to make them really think, right? To think about what it is we could do. And so, yeah, there's no sex in the champagne room. Get You got to do a lot of hard work, baby. And and really, these data scientists, they just got to dress it up, man. They got to get some style, some swagger, right? They got to come rocking that data like it's like it's everybody's business. Yes, right. Yes, exactly right. So maybe we should do a music video. A bunch of data scientists walking, got the bling on. Yo, yo, yo. I'm down for it. I'm down for it. Whatever, whatever gets the message out there. Word, right? Yeah, word to the word to the wise. Yeah, yo, yo, yeah. Oh God, our kids are gonna see this and just shake their heads, right? My kids are already think I'm a I'm a loon, so it's we're, I'm already in good company. Oh yeah, yeah. And hard pressed to get them to watch anything, anyways. There you go. Awesome, awesome. And then, you know, when we look at the, the silver bullet, right, like, you know, obviously you, you've get, made some great points on, on you know, how to phrase that and, and how to take a better approach to it. But 
what are some things that you know organizations and data scientists can do to really capture all the opportunity is out there i know you know you, you speak a lot about you know the economics of business everything like that and i certainly agree with that but you know what what are some other silver bullets they can put in the gun well i i think the the most powerful silver bullet that we have when we engage with the business users is really to take the time up front to identify, validate, value, and prioritize the decisions they're trying to make. Now, that, and, and we find when we focus on decisions, there's some really good things that happen. First off, every business user that I've ever talked to in my 30 years plus years of doing this knows a decision they're trying to make. Right, it might be around customer acquisition or retention. It might be around unplanned hospital readmissions. It might be about excessive inventory or on-time delivery. Right, they they know the decisions. Every business user knows the decision because, to a certain extent, the decisions that they're trying to make haven't changed for years, decades, maybe even generations. What's changed is the data and the analytics to give us different answers. And that what's interesting is when you bring the business people who understand the decisions they're trying to make, and by the way, have created some heuristics that they're using to help make them make these decisions, and you marry them with a data scientist who really is, is specialized at you know identifying the variables and metrics that might make better predictors of, the, of those decisions. When you bring those together, magic happens. Magic happens, and so there's the decisions become this very simple link point between the business stakeholders and the data scientists. And it creates huge synergies. And so one of the things that you, you know about me, T-Man, I'm a, also a big fan of design thinking. And the reason why I think design thinking is really important is that if data science is trying to find nuances buried in the data, design thinking is trying to find nuances buried in the users, in the humans. And so we use design thinking to help us identify this latent tribal knowledge that organizations have. And if we can identify this, this tribal knowledge in the form of heuristics, if we can identify heuristics, the data science team can go through a process of validating or rejecting those heuristics. And if they can validate them, they can put them into models. And if I can put it into a model, then I can scale it. So that's it. Simple. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's great advice for a Friday. Well, hey, I, I, uh, I, I had a lot of fun today, and I look forward to doing more of these. I, I'm sure you'll keep me on my toes, right? I wouldn't expect it any other way, and, uh, you know, there you go. We got our answer. Everybody, have a fantastic weekend or day or wherever you're at when you're watching this video, and do take care. Thanks so much, Bill. Thanks, T-Man. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.